computer says it's 6.15, so um, welcome everyone to the September 23rd, 2024 meeting of the Town of Rochester Select Board, which has been posted in three public places and on the website and emailed to interested parties. So we conform to the open meeting law. And we're going to start with the minutes from the prior meeting of September 9th, which was um, uh, pretty brief and to the point. And I move to approve. Let's second those. All in favor? All right. All right. Yeah. And um, yeah, you didn't miss a whole lot. <laughs> no, that you didn't. Pat. I watched it. And uh, we'll start out with um, we have a guest, um, Ashley. Right off, the right, bat, up, huh? right off the bat. Is this yeah. the um, chair of honor, or you is it? Stand you, up can or you can stand up. You can do whatever you want. want. There are no rules. Yeah. 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 All right. You want. Well, I'm going to just stay over here. Yeah. Then. Okay. okay. See That's where good. I can see everybody. Mm -hmm. So um, my name is Ashley Lucht, and I work with uh, a consulting company called Quantified Ventures that is, was hired by the State of Vermont Drinking Water and Groundwater Protection Division mm -hmm. to provide technical, managerial, and financial capacity assistance to communities throughout Vermont. Um, you may, Terry, you may recognize um, my name because I used to work for the um, Drinking Water State Revolving Loan Fund for 15 or so years which is ancillary to the Drinking Water and Groundwater Protection Division. Mm -hmm. um, so I speak the language of water. Uh, <laughs> and the, the State Revolving Loan Program provides low interest loans to public drinking water systems. Uh, it has a sister program or a sibling program called the Clean Water State Revolving Loan Fund, which provides funding for wastewater, stormwater, and nature-based solution programs or excuse me, um, projects. So the reason why I am here is because our first round of um, targeted assistance is to what are considered disadvantaged communities throughout the state. And disadvantaged uh, for purposes of this program are communities whose median household income is less than the statewide average. And so Rochester <clears throat> has a median household income less than the statewide average, and it has a public water system in it. Mm -hmm. And so that is why um, those, uh, those at the Drinking Water and Groundwater Protection Division has asked us to go and visit all of the public water systems or the communities where there are public water systems to introduce myself and to sort of... Um, peddle my wares, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. Um, the work that I do can run the gamut of um, sort of helping with uh, user rate analysis, budgeting, you know, seeing how you're doing in terms of planning for the future, capital improvement planning, mm -hmm. um, long range planning to, okay, you've got a distinct project that you know that you want to apply for, um, helping you get the funding to sort of apply for it. I, I heard you mention Jeremy Rathbun. Um, mm -hmm. He's somebody who I have worked with in the past, although it does sound, you said he's with Middlebury College now? Yeah. So he's not um, a, a practicing PE, but um, many of the engineering firms throughout Vermont I've got a long history with, um, and they would be the ones who would sort of do the work. Um, but. Uh, in terms of helping you apply for funding in order to get that work done. That's that's what I do, that's what I know. Um, and that's just why I'm knocking on your door. I saw your saw our printout in your folder there. Yep. yep. So that's yep. just a one pager of <clears throat> of um, of what we do. Uh, like I said, I'm hired by the Drinking Water and Groundwater Protection Division. So so Principally, um, I can help public water systems, but if you have stormwater or wastewater or are interested in looking at sort of nature-based solutions to address those issues, there are some other entities that um, my consulting firm uh, is partnered with, and it's on the back side of that one pager. It's called the um, New England Water Infrastructure Network. It's out of the University of Maine. 
um, their environmental finance center. So if you have wastewater needs, I can help you under that contract. If you have water needs, I can help you under uh, this contract. Um, I actually came to Rochester, I mean, I'm probably dating myself at this point, like 15, 10, 15 years ago, um, at the start of, uh, Terry, you probably remember. So we're the, we did one in 04. Okay. Was 03. it that long ago? Yeah. That would be 20, 20 years, years ago. Oh. Now you're really yeah. dating yourself. Okay. <laughs> I started working. I started working for the state in 2004 um, okay. and I was not a new graduate it had been a couple of years um, maybe it was because you guys got a planning loan from the drinking water program and then did you get USDA funding to yeah. implement okay so that's probably what it was it was um, a planning loan to hire the engineer to design the system and then used USDA to build the system um, and we extended our water main tool on the other side we had to okay for the farm Okay, so you guys have, have utilized the um, funding programs over the years, um, but lots of changes, lots of regulations now. Um, so that's just, I'm here saying hi. So Hello. Quantified Ventures is a company that is subcontracting by the state of Vermont? Um, the state of Vermont hired us as contractors to do this work. Okay. Yeah. So any work that I would provide you would be f at, at no cost to you. And that um, would be pure all paperwork, grant writing? Um, yeah, and it would be, um, like I said, user rate, like if you're like, oh, you know, we're having trouble figuring out, you know, are we charging the right rates or, um, what kind of, you know, should we be budgeting differently? Um, where are our assets now? Where do they need to be? Are we planning appropriately financially for them? Consulting. Yes. Okay. Even things like, do we need to update any of our water ordinances or water policies, things of that nature? Um, really anything to do with like the managerial and financial operations of a water system mm -hmm. is, is where is where I my experience is. Mm -hmm. Technically, you've got you've got an operator, you've got engineers. Like I know enough to be like, I know the words, but I'm certainly not gonna, I, I'm not gonna tell your operator how to operate the system. You can't. Correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is correct. I know I know when to when to be like that's not my <laughs> that's not that's not my area of expertise. <laughs> So Terry, does anything pop into your mind where you would like to have some analysis or input on? I don't know. We she just touched bases. We've been, you know, we're doing the ten-year plan. Yeah, right. We're in the process of that with two rivers. In the capital. Uh, Was, yeah. Is that for wastewater? For, for, it's for capital. Okay, so it's capital plan. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> yeah, and I know we spoke a little while ago, but it, but it it was. Um, <laughs> Um, the my contacts at DEC are very much like I want you to go to I want you to go visit. So even though we spoke for a few minutes a couple of months ago, yeah. they were like, "Can you go see them?" And I was like, "Yes, I can." <laughs> so here I am. Um, but if you've got uh, two rivers doing your capital plan, then then that's um, yeah. then that's good. Now, what do you do with the capital plan? And that. And that may be an area where, mm -hmm. where I can be of assistance, um, thinking about the different funding and financing programs yeah. that exist. Yeah. So I can think of one spot where we um, has been off our radar, but we were um, the recipient of what do they call that um, stormwater um, filtration system down at the town garage? Yeah. That Oh, the th a three-acre permit or three-acre stormwater? No. It was um, an in-ground um, defender system that I Tri believe I needs field. to be um, oh. maintained and, and cleaned out periodically, and that's something that we don't have a plan or funding for. Got it. And so we could use some help maybe no, identifying. Well, you give us any plan on no, no, they no. don't. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, and unfortunately the, um, the funding programs that I'm familiar with do not provide assistance for ongoing operation and maintenance. 
Um, oh, the, just new ones? Yeah, it's for really the replacement of an asset or upgrade of infrastructure. Um, operation and maintenance is really something that you should be working into your budget. Mm -hmm. mm. Now, that's also where I could be like, let's look at your budget and let's make sure that you're doing proper planning for the maintenance of your infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, certainly finding, and it, it wouldn't make any sense to take out a loan for, um, no. for the maintenance of, of your no, assets. No. Right. Um, but even gathering information about what it would take and what it would cost to do that you know, it wouldn't be actually like, you know, yeah, no, that blurs so the line a little bit. So your drinking water, sewer and storm water? Yeah. Uh, it, it depending, yes. Um, let's just say yes, I can help with all of them. <laughs> okay. It would have to, there may need to be, so drinking water, it's very clear, like, yeah, I'm already yeah. under contract to do that for wastewater or storm water. Um, there would need to be kind of a, like a permission getting from mm -hmm. another, um, entity to make sure that that the work um, it meets their goals okay okay, okay. quantified ventures QV you can just say QV QV we get a lot of quantified adventures <laughs> qualified <laughs> ventures no. I have people and I live and I live in I don't know their name Hmm? I have people here that I don't know their names. Should I stop and ask them their names? Mm -hmm. Okay. I excuse me, but I, right. I have Sharon. Can you unmute and give us your full name? S W. Can you unmute and give us your full name? And Hi, my name is Alexander Wing, and S W is Shannon Wing. Okay. Shannon Wing. My name is Sharon Solomon, S-O-L-O-M-O-N. Thank you. I think we're caught up now. <laughs> I was just going to say, I live in Winooski, so I, I live here in Vermont. I'm, I've am i been here for 24, 5, 4 years. More than more than twenty. More than twenty years. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, you tend to lose track after yeah. a while. <laughs> I was doing a presentation like last week, and I was like, "Oh, these, you know, this information is from a couple of years ago." Uh, I was like, "Or maybe like more than 10 and like the number was two thousand and eight, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that's like six years ago." No big deal. Like, Still this century. Like though. five minutes, five minutes later, somebody was like, "That's sixteen years ago," and I was like, "No, no, that's not true." <laughs> um, so, so you don't have in, in your mind any hot spots where you'd like think, boy, they could really use my help with, with this? You know, I, t I took a look at the um, information that uh, the drinking water program has on you and mm -hmm. uh, like your sanitary survey. Um, I did notice that you haven't, you don't have a lead service line inventory. Um, we just got done doing it. You yep. did. I okay. submitted it last you did. Thursday. Okay. It's in yeah, review. The communication was from April, and so it. We have no lead ones. That's yeah, because I actually noticed that you didn't have any lead show up in your sampling. Right. Um, on your CCR. So I did a little bit of yeah. you know looking at your and there's nothing that that jumps out immediately. It was the only one, and it looked like you had already. Um, address that, but there was a hydrant on six inch line, but yeah. you just painted the Paint it black. Painted it black. Paint it black. So if that's the only line that has a hydrant on it that's undersized, then you know, generally speaking, mm -hmm. like communities like you are it's just replacing old stuff. Like it's right. it, it's it's not a problem until it's a problem and right, then right. like how old are your lines how old are your meters how about your storage tank how about your filtration your treatment like when you start looking at those items and looking at them and saying okay well they're 40 50 60 years old mm -hmm. where are our breaks happening where where do we have water loss um, are there vulnerable areas especially because of a lot of the rain and a lot of the flooding that's happened is it is it highlighting some vulnerabilities in the system that maybe you want to start thinking about addressing, moving a line, elevating it, maybe even drilling deeper? I know I'm just thinking about 
water lines that go across like river crossings mm -hmm. um, in terms of like being scoured away. So those are just some off the hand thoughts, not saying that that's something. So replacing old hydrants, that would be more maintenance than, than improvements? I would say hydrants, things like any kind of appurtenances on a water line, whether it be um, valves or hydrants or um, pressure reducing valves, things like that, are typically replaced when the entire main, when the entire line gets replaced. Mm -hmm. Just because, I mean, there's the yeah. hydrant, but then there's like yeah, the hydrant, connected. right? Yeah. Like there's all the stuff that goes down. Yeah. And like, that's a thing to like, dig up where the hydrant is to mm -hmm. shut it off and so yeah. those those things typically happen unless there's a, a major issue when the entire water line gets replaced so i would say think about if there are areas in your community where you are frequently fixing water leaks um, or even do you know how much water you're losing where is it going um everybody's <laughs> like terry yeah. <laughs> we're, knock on wood, we're in really good shape. Okay. We lose them. Okay. So you guys may be in great shape. And so if that's the case, then I can go to the next community, um, which will be Sutton later this week. Yeah. Um, can we reach out to you? Any? I mean, do we have can. to give you like a right now no. type of thing? Can we like think about it maybe? Like I'm wondering about like our rates, like if right. just right. to have someone like her look at that right. and tell I us I was our thinking the same thing. Yeah. Anything like that? So. Yeah, absolutely. I'm here for, so the contract runs through next year. Like not just January 1st, but like 12 months from now. Okay. So if you want to, after you get through budget season, um, or maybe in advance of budget season. I don't know when you're. I just started. You just yeah. started. Okay. Yeah. And I know sometimes the water, so the utilities, kind of like, are later. Like you'll, you'll do the general fund budget in advance of town meeting day, and then you'll do the utilities <laughs> kind of come. Actually, Wednesday. we meet Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, we do. Wednesday. Okay. Mine's no. So Wednesday. Um, <laughs> well, good timing. maybe we <laughs> maybe it'll be a okay. We're good for this year, but let's start planning for next year yeah. type of thing. Because sometimes these rate reviews can get can get kind of um, lengthy and involved and testy. Yeah, <laughs> um, like grievances. Yeah. 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 So um, sometimes it is good to have a long lead time before you start implementing them. But yeah, no, you do not have to tell me now. This was more of a like, hello, mm -hmm. I'm here. And this is ongoing? It is. Okay. It, yep. it may behoove us to also, once we get the capital plan finalized, is make sure she gets a copy of the mm -hmm. water sewer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that would be a good idea? Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah, the big thing for me is, they let our fees go way too long before they upped them. Mm -hmm. When was the last time rates were increased? Last well, year. they were three years ago. Okay. But before that, it was 15. <gasps> yeah. But then we just did it yeah, a just couple months ago. Too. Then we yeah, just yeah. did it we just this did next it. time when we read this week. Okay. They, they were going to go up a little bit. I recommend annually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, That's at what least, I've been told by everybody. At least to, to keep up with inflation. Now, it doesn't have to be tied to inflation, obviously. Like, you're not going to do it 10%. Right. Um, unless you have to do it 10%. Right. But, but I certainly strongly encourage um, modest increases in keeping with your budgetary needs. But it's also like if you're not, yeah. Yep. All of those things. So, um, yes, my services are here. I'm not going anywhere, so, at least until next October. So we should probably send her a copy of our rates mm -hmm. right now, and because we just upped along them with a the um, couple the, minutes, with the, you know, okay. and the, yeah. Yep. And, I can and do follow that. up with a list of like here are the typical documents that I yep, review in yeah. terms yep. of like just getting started. It's like the right. audit, your current budget, your year to date like rates. Like I've got a, I've got like five or six main documents that I really enjoy reading. Um, yeah, that would be good. <clears throat> cool. Who should be the person that I send? I've got a couple of. Um, emails who would be the best 
You have you have most of it. So yeah. Um, you can send it to me. <coughs> it's assistant town clerk. Assistant town clerk. Yep. Okay. Perfect. All right. And your name is Kristen. Kristen. Yes. Great. All right. Well, thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. And thanks for having me on first. Great presentation. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for coming. Good to got to go to Winooski. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's an hour and 20 minutes. I was in um, Pownal. Oh, geez. Yeah, that's far. And then the next week I was in Canaan. Oh, my oh, gosh. Geez. So I've... You're touring. I'm touring. Yeah, and then it's Sutton and then Wheelock. So oh, wow. foliage time. Wow. I am enjoying I'm ticking off all of my 251 club towns. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being that. All right, well, that conversation leads right into the next item on the agenda is to approve an amendment for the capital budget and program services between the town of Rochester and Two Rivers Ottaquichi Regional Planning Commission. So um, I'd uh, move to um, sign this agreement. I second. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. And um, we also have um, another important um, opportunity or, or support we get from the state is to um, participate in the fiscal year 25 Better Roads um, Category A grant, a letter of intent to participate. Um, we like participating in yes, grants. I, I move <laughs> to uh, sign this one too. I second. All in favor? All right. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> And um, Tony, how are you doing? We haven't seen you for a while. We understand that yeah, you guys have a, a vacancy on the um, <coughs> library trustees um, yeah. position, and you guys have got a, a recommendation of Vincent Martinez. Right. Yeah. That's basically it. Do you want to say anything about that? No, he seems to be very good. Uh, yep. I haven't seen a lot of him, but the board, the rest of the board saw him a while back. And He's pretty impressive, I think. All right. Yeah. He's a newcomer to town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. cool. Yeah. And want to be involved. So I um, <clears throat> thank you, Vincent. I'd move to uh, uh, appoint Vincent to the um, um, library trustees board. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you, Vincent. He's not in the room, is he? No. No. Not on Zoom? Okay, well. Thank you. We'll let him know. <clears throat> um, then we have a um, park use application um, for the Rochester Parent Teacher Organization organization Giant Pumpkin Way In um, for um, October 11th from 5 to 6 p.m. And um, sounds fun. Sounds fun. I'd move to approve that application. I second. Yeah, no pumpkin smashing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then we also have a um, another forum that is asking for a signature for the USDA um, CDS SF424D form, which is the final form for the USDA grant um, for the high school, the potential high school redevelopment if the town chooses to go forward in that direction. So. Um, just to get our ducks in a row, and, and I'd move to sign that. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. All right. Um. Yeah, got some business done. <laughs> All right. And um, got um, anything else about the library you'd like to speak on, Tony? Uh, yeah, we have, uh, Maya has produced a, a number of things that are going on for, uh, 
next month. So if you see these pages on some of the bulletin boards, take a look. Because <laughs> uh, there are a lot of things here for kids and families and for adults. So that's a pretty good thing. And some time ago you mentioned that Breadloaf Construction was going to be looking at the side of the library. Or mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, was in contact with them this last week because our contract with them runs out the end of this month. And they had an injury to the person that they were going to bring over here. And so he said they're still going to get a look at it. Jeff has also put together a, a bunch of numbers that for the town to consider in the repairs of that. And so I, we were kind of just waiting for Breadloaf to show up to do that. And you know, they said they'd they'd be trying to get here as soon as they can. So it's still on the docket. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Um, Frank, you got any um, <coughs> exciting highway news? Uh, no. We're just they're just building up the sand building pile. up the sand yeah. pile and yeah. uh, raising dust because the roads are pretty so dusty. Dry. It's so yeah. dry and uh, they're. Hoping that winter doesn't come too soon. Yeah, I I don't know exactly when the new pickup is supposed to arrive, but I know it's it's soon. I think before first, winter. Yeah, it's the first of next month, I think. Okay. <clears throat> and also the wall out here was complete. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. That's not really a highway thing, but, but it looks good. Yeah, yeah. they did yeah. a good job on it. So that's a job that's been. They were lucky it was so dry. Yes, <laughs> and that we had good weather. And it didn't hit the town water line either. <laughs> right, the, sewer. the town sewer. sewer yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the water we were in. Yeah, sewer. They did a good job, and we were lucky to get it done. Yeah. It's been in the making for so long, it's great to have it finalized. So, Terry, we talked um, already about utility sum. Do you have anything else that is on your mind? No. No? Okay. Um, Kristen, you got any updates on the hey, grant Jeff. front? I do not. Oh. No. Jeff is on. All right. Jeff? He's coming. Mm -hmm. right, good evening. Um, tomorrow uh, we are going to be uh, auditing um, the town garage and the town office uh, as part of the municipal energy resilience programs uh, level two audits. Um, the grant application uh, is due on Friday, the 27th. So I don't, I don't have it even clear that we're going to receive the report uh, before that application deadline. Um, However, I'm hoping that uh, we will. And the uh, question I have for the board is, in filling out this application, um, there are likely to be a number of recommendations, each one with a separate cost item. Um, and the question I have is whether the board um, needs to gather to uh, take a look at this information and make some decisions about uh, the particular items uh, that are proposed or whether I should just go ahead and sign up for everything that uh, is within the um, financial limit for each project and then deal with it as we uh, move forward. Uh, given the public uh, meeting laws, I didn't know whether, you know, late this week uh, uh, this would be something that we could squeeze in with all the board members there or whether uh, I just take a directive from one of you. Up to $50,000 of expenditure. All right. But I imagine this is going to be over that. I would think it'd be quite a bit over that. But it would be like those. each building. All right. I think we're going to need to look at the list and see mm -hmm. what's happening there. Let's see what. Let we us know if you get the report. The minute you get the report, and we'll we'll gather. Yeah. Does that sound okay? Yeah, and I'll be quizzing them as to when we're going to get it uh, tomorrow because 
I would assume that it's going to take them at least a day uh, out back in the office to put together all their findings. We start at 8 o'clock at the uh, town garage and in the, after uh, and the afternoon uh, we'll move to the, uh, the town office. I'd be surprised if we do get it by Thursday. Yeah, we do. But... Town garage is going to be fast. <laughs> Yeah, there, there isn't much there. <laughs> Build some walls. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. We have a plan. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Keep us updated. Will do. Thank you. Good yeah. night. Appreciate it. Yep. So um, we have uh, um, any old business that comes to mind, or we, is that going to combine in with the public comment? We have a pretty good... Um, bunch of people in the room that I presume have got something, something they want to say? speak about. Hi. Not Time for open comments. Oh. I'd love to speak. Hello. Sorry. This is Alexander Wing. Is this now is an all right time to speak? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, so it's Alexander Wing and my wife, Shannon. And uh, this, this first question is, is regarding the meeting, the meeting of August 12th on uh, 2024, the video recording cuts off before the removal of the Pent Road designation of Jones Mountain Road conversation. And I'm wondering where the video recording is available. The minutes for the meeting is posted on the website. It, right, and we found that, but the video cuts off before that conversation. I could, I could reach out to the Orca and just see if we can. Right, Orca Media may have the entire meeting on their website, O-R-C-A Media. And, and you said which one was that? Uh, one? That Orca Media is where we uh, were able to pull up the partial video. Oh. Hmm. Usually they run right through to the end. Yeah, that was a, on the first part of the meeting anyway, wasn't it? I'd have to look, I'd have to look too, I don't remember. Okay, uh, well, well, we will look further on Orca Media for it. Um, so the second thing is that we were informed by our neighbor about the removal of the Pent Road designation uh, and requirement to remove our gate. And that's why we started looking for the meeting and the agenda, the uh, minutes and the recording. Uh, and we want to know how come we didn't receive any notice of this sent out letters um, or that there was a meeting regarding this we at all we sent letters we sent letters to all was the it certified I just it. it was supposed to be certified was it sent certified no no didn't okay need to i can be. see uh, but we okay. did send letters to every landowner Okay, because Title 19, Highways Chapter 007, the 709 notice and hearing, it says that uh, the notice shall be given by certified mail, but we hadn't received that. Uh, so we would we would request, um, because we didn't receive notification, um, we found out from our neighbor last weekend when we were up at camp that uh, we get some additional time to comply with that gate removal request. Yeah, we'll certainly uh, do that. We weren't informed we that have, uh, it had to be certified from our lawyer. He didn't tell us that, so that's why we didn't do it, I'd say. But we did send letters out to everyone. He said we just needed to send letters, so we'll get you a certified letter. Uh, and I have one more thing. Um, we would like to add, and this might not be the appropriate way to do it, maybe we have to send you a letter, but we would like to... Uh, revisit the class four designation and the length of that to the October 14th meeting because we think that the length of the road is misrepresented and incorrect with regards to the board's recent meetings. It want to be placed on the agenda for October 14th. October 14th meeting, okay. Yep. So we are placed on agenda for October 14th. And that falls on Columbus Day. That would still take place, or yeah. Indigenous yeah. people. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Yes. Thank you all for your time. Uh, have so a good is, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, if you um, want to bring any information why you uh, why you're disputing that um, 
then that would be helpful to have that for right, that we meeting. We have any information in advance yeah. so we could have a good discussion. Absolutely. We certainly will. Thank you for your time. Okay. All right. Um, and is there anyone else on Zoom that wants to speak? Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, thank you for letting him go ahead there. It's easy to give time to someone who's not here. Yeah. So my name is Lori Church, and sorry to join on the slightly contentious topic. Um, we moved, my partner and I, who's on the Zoom, she's Sharon Solomon, we moved to Rochester because Sharon developed a sensitivity, a, an injury, really, from EMF waves, from electromagnetic frequencies. Uh, it's a radiation sickness. And so we left where we were. We searched around for anything that we could find that would be a uh, quiet location. I say quiet from an EMF standpoint. Mm -hmm. We chose Rochester. It's a beautiful location. It's a relatively quiet thing. The great part is we love the beautiful surroundings. The lack of the man-made visual clutter that you see in a lot of other places. Of course, Vermont's no billboards, very few cell towers. And then we combine that with I will work remotely, so I love the idea of the EC fiber, the AT&T coverage, but I can Ethernet in, and it's very quiet. So the downside is there's a proposed cell tower. So I'm not certified to practice law in Vermont, but I have a law degree, so I start looking at things a little bit more uh, nerdily, I guess, than maybe other people do. So I read the town plan. I read the PUC process. We started looking into that a little bit. So the PUC governs the telecom facilities. Yeah. The board has to issue a certificate of public good. And I, when I was reading in the town plan, it was even quoting it, um, the, the board must issue a certificate of public good after examining environmental, economic, and social impacts. And the board must give due consideration of substantial deference to the recommendations of the municipal and regional planning commissions. This is page 15 of the town plan. And I, Again, being the nerd that I am, I printed excerpts. I didn't want to print them. Well, I did print the whole 100 pages, but I only brought about 15 pages of it. There's a lot of information there, and it really speaks to why the proposed cell tower plan should not go. It, we had a, the Verizon and Vertex publish something June 12th. We actually missed the window of opportunity to really have a public forum. They have 60 days, so August 12th was the deadline, and we didn't have that. So now we would have to join after the fact. The municipality, the town itself, is automatically has standing for any kind of suit. Then individuals, like us, can intervene and petition. Hopefully the town will intervene and petition. Because Sharon, my partner, is brilliant. She came up with three U's to make it nice and easy, and it fits in the town plan. The cell tower, the proposed cell tower, is unnecessary, ugly, and unhealthy. And the town plan actually supports all of that. So it's unnecessary. We have landlines in that area supplied by multiple several carriers. That's on page 35 of the town plan. Uh, there's AT&T in the Federated Church Steeple. So there's cell coverage. And then there's internet. There's a lot of internet options, including landlines, DSL, cable, satellite, and of course, EC fiber. Again, that's on page 35 of the town plan. So it's unnecessary to bring in another cell tower. Cell towers that most people don't understand and realize it actually covers up to five and even beyond five miles. So we have several already to cover the area. It's ugly. <laughs> One of the reasons we love Vermont is it's beautiful. And according to the town plan and according to the state, we're in, a, in Vermont's scenic byway. 100 through 100 is a scenic corridor. And that is on page 16 of this significant area. We shouldn't have a tower, a big, ugly, erector set tower on the top of a hill, which would greet our visitors and all of us, and we'd be subjected to looking at it all the time. Uh, it's the recreation, of, you guys know this better, way better than I do, but the recreation factor of here, people love coming here, and it's a significant revenue stream. So people don't want to look at an ugly space, they want to look at something beautiful. And it's unhealthy. Ben can probably speak, well, I know he can speak to this a whole lot better than I can, but there are a lot of factors of why it's harmful and unhealthy to the nature. The natural resource protection of, wild, protection of wildlife is factored in on page 16. Uh, flood with impervious services, 
I want to put impervious surfaces on the top of a mountaintop, especially when we've had flooding in the past. That's on page 53. Uh, the protection of flora, fauna, and deer wintering, that's on page 61. That's a beautiful area for wildlife. And then it's definitely unhealthy for humans. Sharon is a great indicator of that. Most of us are affected by it in some way. We just don't see it as, um, as intensely as other people. So short version is the Certificate of Public Health. <laughs> certificate of Public Good is for Verizon. It is not for the public good of right. the Rochester <laughs> citizens. If Verizon is adamant about entering the area, why can it not partner with AT&T and use the existing structure? It's actually kind of hidden from an aesthetic standpoint within the, the tower. And the request that the town of Rochester follows town plan, oppose the proposed <coughs> South Tower because it is unnecessary, ugly, and unhealthy. I don't know if that was my three minutes, but thank you for the no. time. When you refer to the board, are you referring to the select board or the planning board? Either uh, one. The Whoever town plan ultimately the town right. developed by the planning board. Right, and it's the planning board that has been, and, and as far as I understand, they haven't <coughs> submitted the the um, South Tower builder hasn't still sub submitted their plan. There, they've been like testing the waters. Right. But, yeah. So, so this they, is a good time to make noise about it. Then. It's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. And then once they ever do, hopefully they never will. But if they ever do file, then we'll have 30 days to comment from there, and mm -hmm. that's where we can all comment. And we can get the message out to the town of Rochester. I've said it in the planning meeting. I'll pay for the postage. Whatever needs to happen, we'll put together the flyer. We'll pay for the postage. I'll haul it down to the post office. I'll do the legwork as long as we can get the message out because it's not very good for us. Do you want to speak on that? Sure, yeah. I have a comment that's in the same vein. Um, I just jotted down a few notes, and um, I'll read them here. I think they're less than three minutes. But um, so our town of Rochester is, a, is as exceptional in what we don't have in, as in what we do. Every weekend, people from more crowded places flock here to get away from what those places have become. But we're not always noisy, congested, paved over, and polluted. To seek quietude, clean, clear creeks and watersheds. To walk and bike trails through wild, unfragmented forests. To gaze upon unbroken ridgeline views. To travel gravel roads winding through open pastoral and still farmed landscapes and to immerse in the quietude where people can reconnect with themselves in the natural world, where they can think again and wonder and where they can inhale deeply and take refuge. In short, they come here for what we do not have so they can immerse in the increasingly rare qualities that we do, that we still do. As a town, we have understood this particular quality about this place. We've garnered a well-deserved reputation as a town which shows leadership through modeling examples of more sustainable land use and economy, through things like the Ridgeline Collective, our trails, protected landscapes, our respect for the unique qualities of this place, its working landscapes, its high watershed position, etc. Our town, our town plan already articulates this, fortunately, and the Verizon Tower proposal directly infringes upon both the specifics of the town plan and its intent. Um, this, the, this is for duplicate coverage, for the most part, by a new company. It's not an outgrowth of anything this pe people here or this place saw, uh, but an active process from outside forces to capitalize, uh, enabled by the corporate welfare system, which funds these projects through our tax dollars. Um, this isn't the free market at work. The proposal exists for one reason alone, um, which is to leverage that public gravy train of tax, tax dollars to put up towers under the now holy banner of cell coverage. Uh, even as these developments clearly cause public harm in various ways, including Watershed erosion, increased flood damage, and future flooding events, a direct result of developing high elevation, steeply accessed, currently unbroken forest lands, even as they cause new wildland fragmentation and impact wildlife negatively as a result, even as they uh, cause new and irreversible usage damage, to name a few. Uh, fortunately, our town plan shows that this is not consistent with what we've wanted to do here uh, and the importance of protecting this place. So I think it's incumbent upon us to continue to show forward-thinking leadership in the face of this and other projects which undermine this place and the prospects of this place that many have worked so hard to for, uh, protect. Um, the, this tower proposal by Verizon represents an urgent need to stand by what we've agreed to protect as a town. Specifically on page 15, policy A2, which states encourage developers to utilize cluster planning principles to minimize any adverse impacts on agricultural or forest lands. 
Obviously, this tower proposal directly violates this principle of clustering infrastructure and development, adding a second brand new tower in an entirely new location, the top of an undeveloped knoll, uh, which duplicates much of the area that it would cover while the town itself already has maximum cell phone coverage. The salesman who was here a couple weeks ago pitching the project didn't even realize that the village already had great coverage and didn't have an answer as to why Verizon wasn't seeking to cluster their transmitter with that existing infrastructure or near it. Um, page 15, bottom of page, new telecommunication facilities shall be cited and designed in locations that reinforce the town's traditional patterns of growth. Obviously, this proposal couldn't be further from this recommendation. Page 16, section 3, bullet 3, says new telecommunication facilities should be cited to avoid state-designated scenic byways. We already heard about that just before. Um, Route 100, you'd see this coming up Route 100 from the south directly as like a welcome to Rochester monument. It'd be 100 feet above the existing canopy. And I've been driving in from the north lot lately looking at that same knoll. And because that knoll juts out into the, into the river valley itself, which is why they want to put it there, um, you'd see it from the north probably as well, way more visibly than the, these very much BS balloon tests that they, that's designed to kind of uh, minimize what you'll actually see in reality uh, have indicated. Um, although they didn't actually use those visuals in the balloon test, they picked areas that actually aren't very consequential for the most part. Um, so I'd like to know how I and others can help the town defend our plan and all that it represents and also how the leadership of the town will do so as well. Thank you. Okay, Deb, your turn. Excuse me, June. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me, June. Martha's on. It's yeah. Martha. I just, I don't know who that gentleman oh, that was, was who spoke. I just was Ben quoting. Falk. Ben, and what's his last name? F-A-L-K. F-A-L-K. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry, yeah. I'm Deb Moore from Rochester. So I was at the planning meeting um, a few weeks ago, and I mean, it really, it was made clear to us that that was an informational session for the Vertex salesperson, which is exactly what he was. Um, and those of us who did speak up in opposition were told that we would have a hearing so we could say what we needed to say. So this really needs some clarification because of this whole, this whole, you know, the 60 day thing is gone and we don't know when the 30 day comment period is gonna happen and how are we gonna know what, what's, who's gonna, you know, is it the planning board or the select board who's gonna contact the townspeople about that and when would we have such a hearing and assuming we do have a hearing, is it really going to be heard by anybody? Like, who's it for? Who's the recipient? Is, you know, is it the select Public board? Service board. Who is it? What is it? Um, you know, how in depth can it be? And everything that people say, you know, is that really going to be taken into account? Is there for any kind of a decision anywhere? So it's just as more of a procedural process kind of thing that I'm interested in. I just want to make sure it doesn't fall through the cracks that the townspeople, you know, get a, a say into what's going on. The hearing will be through the Public Service Board. Um, the, the hearing will come through from the Public Service Board and you will have an opportunity to, it'll probably take place in this locality somewhere. It'll be in the newspaper. It's supposed to be as warned as any other meeting. So we will probably also have it on our weekly email. We will, you know, also warn it around town as well. So, um, you know, just keep your eyes at the post office or on Front Porch Forum, what, you know, whatever. If you're on our email list for our town office, there's a message that goes out once a week about what's happening around town. So um, you, you would have to keep your eyes open for it, but it will be duly warned. And it will be with the state of Vermont. The state of Vermont will do that. And, and who, so those are the people we're appealing to. It's their decision. Yes. It's, it's not, I mean, Vermont passed a law so quite a long time ago that state. they wanted to have uh, good cell coverage and broadband across the whole state. So they have pretty much overseen whatever the towns decide. So the town 
uh, gave its blessing to go ahead to the Public Service Board. It didn't give its blessing to put the tower in. It gave its blessing to the company to go apply to the Public Service Board. I don't know so if we gave our <laughs> blessing for them to do that so much that we don't really oh, have, we don't have the we power have to the yeah. say they can't. It's out of our jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah. Don't. Um, but we don't Nancy, have Nancy, Pat, I think it's the Public Utility Commission. P-U-C, yeah. Right. Not Utility not Commission, yeah. yeah. P-U-C. Okay. Yeah. We don't really does, have that Does that mean that the town or the people in the town or, or, or the town boards don't have a say? They yes, you do. They'll, they will have a hearing, maybe even more than one. And we did request a second balloon test as well. We asked them to publicly um, announce when that was going to happen as well. And they did agree at the planning board meeting that we were at um, that they would be doing that as well. So, but ultimately, so the PUC is the one that makes the decision. So Correct. So, so how do we know if they're taking seriously what the town would like? I don't know how to answer that. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't know how to answer that. I would assume that they're, you know, they're official, working in an official capacity representing the state of Vermont. So, I, I don't know that I would accuse them of not taking you seriously. I'm assuming they will. So there's no such thing. There can be no such thing as some kind of a a vote or something in the town or anything like that that would make any difference? They've taken that power out of the town's hands, but that doesn't mean that the town can't um, Have a say. organize to communicate strongly or right, dis yes. exactly. displeasure about that. that. That's right. that's if that's the, yeah. the just. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is to what you spoke to, offering to, to um, help subsidize that communication of that information. I mean, probably um, a significant portion of the people in town aren't aware of this. I have someone yeah. on yeah. raising their hand. Someone on Zoom? Sharon, unmute yourself. Hi. Um, I just wanted to add uh, something about uh, the pr proposed location of the cell tower. Most of the houses in Great Hawk Colony will be able to see the tower and will be beamed from the tower. Uh, we actually will have a direct line of sight from it from our backyard, and we're on Upper Sparrow Hawk. Um, so we will be beamed by it as well, which is a very giant concern for me. But aside from that, uh, if you actually have another balloon test in the same proposed cell tower area, I would like to request that maybe whoever's in contact with Vertex, uh, instead of a couple of little balloons that are four feet wide or whatever the thing is that they float up there, they need to have that width, four feet or whatever the width is, but they need a hundred feet of balloons so that they can actually show the structure of the tower that everybody's gonna see when they come down 73, what everybody's gonna see from Great Hawk, so they can see the area that's actually being affected. And those beams go over five miles. They will affect everybody. And I'll go back to what Lori said. They're unnecessary. We already have full coverage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Excuse me, um, Dune? Yeah. What is Sharon's last name? Did, do you know or Solomon, did she say? Solomon, S-O-L-O-M-O-N. Solomon, okay, thank you, thank you. In the back there. Hi everyone, I do not have a public comment on the cell tower. Um, oh. So if there's anybody else who would like to comment on the cell tower, maybe. So. A good time before we transition. Uh, my name is Ella Herber Shield. Uh, I work for the Vermont Department of Health in White River Junction, and um, Rochester is part of that health district. Um, I recently started as the prevention consultant, and part of my job is to support communities in building strong, safe, healthy communities with the end goal of preventing substance misuse. So um, I, like the woman who was here earlier, am a consultant. Um, I work directly for the state, 
Um, but similarly, I can help with technical assistance. I can provide educational programming. I can help with grant funding. Um, and I can provide resources, so print resources um, as well as uh, technical resources. Um, so I'm a resource for everyone in the town. Um, if you have an idea or if you are curious about something, um, I'm happy to have a chat about it or to help in any way. Um, and my work spans the entire lifespan um, and also goes across the continuum of care. So everything from uh, early intervention all the way to recovery and treatment. So uh, the Department of Health, would that then include the effects of EMF? So um, I think specifically about substance misuse, um, but, uh, but uh, I think that there are parts of the Vermont Department of Health, I have colleagues that would definitely be interested, and I'm happy to connect people with those, those um, colleagues. Be good. Um, but I think more specifically about um, prevention and yeah. education with substance misuse. It would be interesting, though, to get the department's official, the Department of Health's official stance on, you know, the um, recognition or not of the, the issue. Effects. Yeah. yeah, I'm happy to connect you yeah. with my district health director. Cool. I can actually tell you what it'll be because it, it re it'll reference the FCC. The FCC <laughs> hasn't updated their they refuse to update their standards since 1996. Mm -hmm. All the all the telecommunication safety standards are from 1996. Yeah. Yeah. However, a recent court case, the judge said, "Go back to the FCC. You have to update it because it's been so right, long. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's a cyclical thing. Of it's been 20 something years. So it's time to go back and look yeah, because there yeah. are actual issues." Yeah. Yeah. Mason, did you have your hand up? You did. Yeah. Yeah. Off subject, though. Okay. But it seems like everything is interconnected. I'm, I'm pretty uh, surprised by all this. This is kind of a follow-up on our coming to the point that we did confirm our contract for the mowing for three years, 18 mm -hmm. months, fifty-four thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and that we now, in relation to our climate emergency initiative that the town voted hard heartily for, that we have an opportunity now that the select board can go to John and say, hey John, maybe you should really look at the ability to actually profit more from this three-year contract if you convert to robotic electric lawn mowing. You know, is it possible that he's in a situation after locking in in a three-year contract to actually make more money than he expected? And we win because our carbon footprint is decreased. But possibly in this potential relationship, he may appreciate a letter that speaks that he could go with to the bank and say, hey, I got a three-year contract. The town wants to lower your carbon footprint. How can we make all this work? So it could be a win-win, mm -hmm. but three years is a long time. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, I believe we did um, make the point of saying that we were going to share that information with John. So thanks for. Uh, but I always, yeah. what came to light here is that gee, is a profit greater, fifty percent greater than yeah. he expected. I don't know yeah. exactly, but it sure seems like things are moving quite quickly in that mm -hmm. arena right now. Yeah. Deb? No, yeah, at, sorry. At, at the point that, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going back to the interview. At the point when the, and when Vertex actually applies with the PEC, I think you will know, but right, right, somehow they have yeah. to contact you right yeah. away. So I'm concerned that there might be, I mean, a lapse in time. You know, if we have to wait for the next meeting or the next whatever, is there some way, somehow, that you can immediately get word out to you know, residents? Can you put something on front porch form? Front porch form would be great. That's a good way to do it, yeah. But that's that be possible. Absolutely. Isn't that something she I, can just do? I, I, I made it possible, or I insisted making it possible that the public was notified of the last meeting of the planning board meeting. So no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be as 
open and transparent as possible. You know, I don't, yeah, you had mentioned to me that that it wasn't front porch forum, and I read it avidly. I didn't see it, and I asked a few people who read it also. I think mentioned. it was on there yeah. and two, from two separate people. Oh, well. mm -hmm. oh, I put it out myself. You did put the second one out, yes. Yeah. There was someone the first, before you. I didn't see any, any other thing. I, I got it from Kristen's, um, you know, weekly. That's why I thought. Well, then, Good, you got so it. then it works. Yeah. Yeah. Well, being on the town email list for the updates is the simplest way of uh, staying up to date. Mm -hmm. And how does she do that? Does she just come just in now? Yeah. Yeah, just email address. Let us know. You, yeah, you just have to come here and give your email address, and you will get an email every well, I do. That's, she what I'm does. Saying. That's oh. how I found out about the planning no. meeting. Is that list up there? But I, I, I'm just like one person. I put it out to, on Trump Bush Forum at the last minute because I just found out about it at the last minute. Um, but it, it certainly wasn't widespread. So it would be good if there were like maybe, I don't know what, just repeated it just in case people didn't get it the first time. You know, that kind of thing. Christian, you had your hand up? Um, I did. I just wanted to go back. Um, to you. I'm sorry. That's okay. I feel like she like waited a really long time to like, yeah. say something and then we like listened Jumped and then we it. just moved on and yeah. I didn't even like do, how do we get in touch with you and how do we get your information and yeah. I just want to make sure that that's out I've, there. I will leave cards um, and I like I said I'm, I'm a resource so my cell phone number and my email are, are on there okay. um, and you can feel free to put that information in the minutes as well. Um, oh, yeah. for anyone to have access to. Okay. Um, so I work with a wide variety of community partners, everyone from recovery partners to um, schools to libraries, directly to towns. Um, I don't know if Rochester has um, opted into cannabis sales yet, um, but I'm working with a town right now who is um, dealing with a petition to opt into cannabis sales, so we're holding a hearing. So. Um, you know, anything that comes up related to substances, I'm happy to be a, a resource. Thank you for what you do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, excuse me. Um, Ella, who just spoke, what the consultant? I never got a last name, I'm sorry. Harper Field, right? Harper Shield. Har it is long and complicated. <laughs> 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 so it's two words, it hyphenated Harper Shield? Yeah, it's, it's Harper and then S C H I E H L. Oh. <laughs> I S C H I E H L. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. No worries. Susie. Hi. I just would um, like to follow up from uh, my bringing up the uh, traffic on on School Street. Um, I got an update, and I'm just a little curious about it. I don't quite understand it. Um, so did you, you all talked about, Frank told me what was going on, uh, that the bumps aren't going down because they need to settle into the ground. Frank, could you tell, because I'm afraid I'll make a mistake. Well, what Cooter told me was they have to nail them to the street, and it's too, too late in the season to put this the bumps down because it'll be pulling them right back up. Right back up. up. So, so he doesn't yeah. want to deal with anything like that at this point. Oh, okay. And possibly in the spring he'll revisit it. But he I was doesn't. wondering how they were going to settle into the ground. So that makes that yeah, clear. Yeah, they, they have to nail so. them through the concrete, through the uh, uh, blacktop. Okay. And in then, order to hold them in place. All right. And then you just said in the spring it'll be revisited. We'll revisit it. In the Rather spring. than That's waiting true. another year. This, this is just going on, and it's affecting my mental health, which affects my physical health. And well, we, as a person we can't, who's, can't do much about the winter, you know, because they got to pile the road. Well, no, we can't do much about the winter, but for what I think is, is a reasonable, reasonable about amount of money for the town <coughs> to spend, and for those of you who did not see or hear last meeting last week, Almost everybody, somebody's whispering. Um, School Street is this street here. It is a very heavily used street by everything from oversized 18-wheelers to people on motorcycles and children in strollers and people walking dogs. 
and um, it's a very confusing road. It's a blind curve, difficult access to Route 100. Um, people that did listen to the meeting, I was approached by three people who told me how much they agree with me, and I would think it'd be very easy to find continue doing that. But bottom line is, is, is I as an individual who have been trying for years now to make something happen, um, you got me. I'm burned out. I can't do it. I'm too. I'm, my health is too bad, and I can't. I need to eliminate stress. I want to know if the town can afford two signs that say "slow blind corner, proceed with caution." You can get them so they're two-sided. You can get them so they're one-sided. Um, Hundred and sixty bucks for the single-sided. One hundred and eighty for the double-sided. I, I guess I just wanted to use a cliche, cut to the chase here. Um, is Does the town have $400 it can spend on putting signs in before something happens here that we will all be sorry for? We all know cyclists has already been hit up here. Um, I mean, Smead was sideswiped here. I can't give you dates. Um, it, it's... It, Everybody, including the board, I got the impression, acknowledges that we have an issue here, okay? Especially when there are meetings and there's road work and there's river work and everything, and there's Saturdays with, with recycling. So can you just please give me a yes or a no? Do you guys have, to, do we have the money to potentially avoid what can be a horrific experience that reminds me of, of Mr. Gotti? getting hit on Route 100. Um, I can't, I, this is my front yard. I live in the house next door. I can't in good conscience live here and not speak as I am today, which I've avoided. I've just been trying to get people to see that this is a real issue. So in this moment, can the board say, yes, we have the money, we just don't want to do it? Or no, we don't have the money, we can't do it. And if you don't want to do it, I want a really good reason. <laughs> um, do we want people to slow down? Yes. Do we think signs going to make a difference? But you don't. I doubt it. But but okay, and, and okay. so the sign to cost uh, 140 bucks is not very much money. Then, as Frank mentioned the other day, and getting the sign and getting the guys to to. Put, put it, it in, in. And, and stomp it into the ground is it takes time is and probably where, where we're going to put it where we're going to put it uh, so it's, i know that's not what you want to hear but um, i'll talk with cooter about it to see you know, what he'd say i don't know where he would want to put it maybe right here by your house i don't know that's fine he may, he may have to put it somewhere i mean it's gonna we've already determined it's that going to uh, uh, <laughs> uh be on somebody's lawn basically so I and I don't know this is so difficult I, I, I have a huge amount of respect for all of you I am not intellectually capable of doing what you do for this town and community and I am beyond grateful but I am really frustrated up to the hilt if I buy the signs and hire somebody to put them in. I don't think you have to worry about that, Sue. It's just a matter of where we're going to put them and if, if John wants to deal with that or not. If he wants to deal with if, the fact that somebody could if, get killed outside if he, the door. If he has the time and the okay. inclination to deal with All it. All right. Thank you so much. If You're any welcome. If you hear anything about people driving too fast on School Street or being concerned, or accessing Route 100, I'm begging you to speak up. I'm begging everybody to speak up. Thanks. We've got a toddler living here now. I've got a lovely cat that the entire community likes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm you. getting older. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The um, power company take umbrage at putting signs on the power poles there's power poles already <laughs> in the ground there no, they used would, to work for the electric company they, they, they don't allow that they don't like that they don't no. like that I it seems to me that the whole town needs to slow down because we have had speeding complaints for route 100 bethel mountain road 
Brook Street, Northview Drive, Corey Hill Road, Austin Hill Road, and Liberty Hill Road. School Street. And, and Mass yeah, School, Street. School Street. And, and the park. park. And the if park. we address one, we need to address them all. Right. Because we can't turn away the people that have already already come in to visit us about speeding on their road. Mm -hmm. So right. it's 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 one. Well, it's all Susie of them. Been about number one on the list. <laughs> all of them are one. Everybody's number one on their list. Right. Um, yeah. So <laughs> who wants you know, to be first? That's 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 ten new signs. No. Um, I can talk to excuse me, Patty. Yeah. Patty. Excuse yes. me, it's Martha. I mean. I live on Route 100 on Main Street, but that's a state highway, so it was, yeah. there's nothing yeah. you really can do about that, right? It doesn't right? mean that we don't hear the complaints. No, but we do. Oh, believe me, I, I, can, I can complain myself because I sit on my front porch and people whiz by. But, um, no, I just I just was saying I didn't think that there was anything that the town specifically could do about Main Street because our well, Main Street is a state highway. Well, what we've done about that is, is uh, sign a contract with the... With, um, the with the sheriff's department to spend time um, on random times um, haunting the town and, and um, haunting the town. But, you know, they don't, they're not there all the time, that's for sure. I was going to say, they must be very random because I've only seen them once this summer that I've noticed. <laughs> but I'm sure they've been here other times. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're 10 hours a week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But and, to and Pat's point, everywhere. it's like, well, yeah, where do you... Um, where do you stop? Where and, do you and, start? And honestly, um, whoever's going to be driving too fast, I don't think a sign's going to make a bit of difference. It might make us feel better that even though they ran over someone, at least we had put up a sign, but that's not going to save, you know, but. Well, you know, a sensor that turns on a little yellow flasher with the sign. Then someone's going to have a seizure. But <laughs> yeah. what the, the, it's, yeah. it could be maintained by itself. No. Yeah. yeah. No. Speed bumps, We've had them. Right. The batteries go dead. Can't they put the speed bumps in. No. In, in, in the spring. In, in the spring. spring. Yeah. 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 I think that's the most practical way to go is to put the sleeping policeman in in the spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it'll come out every fall. Yeah. Right. It'll cover yeah. the summer months. Yeah. Right. And that's the most traffic. Yeah. Winter's not quite as. Yeah. Wish we had a magic wand, boy. It would get a lot of use. Yeah. I have a, a related kind of uh, thing about um, the side of Brook Street that was all dug up. And uh, I, has anything, gonna be, it looks like it needs, so badly needs guardrails. Because something bad. <coughs> where's the, where, 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 where the farm truck rolled over? Oh, they did yeah. a culvert like replacement there. And, like, oh, they did. The, yeah. yeah. And plus, they graded the side, and they just graded it definitely it does not need guardrails. Don't go yeah. anything up. It's, fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's an accident waiting, a bad accident waiting to happen. Well, I think we'd have to start at the bottom of the hill. All the way up through. All the way up. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Like, we just put some on the corner there, the what, two years ago? Mm -hmm. On that, right there by the reservoir. We yeah. just we so just I put just those on a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah. They're expensive to install, so it's, you know, where do we stop and where do we start? So it's, it's just a budget. He puts so much in his budget every year for guardrails and bands and tries to maintain what we have. On the school street thing, I mean, you may know about it, but it's traffic calming is a whole field of strategies that landscape architects use to slow traffic down. That not just speed bumps, but anything, generally this, the mechanisms are making the road narrower or making it look like it's narrower. You guys may have it's already looked into it. Pretty narrow, I think. It's yeah. pretty yeah. narrow, yeah. anyway. And then there's yeah. negatives yeah. to narrow, yeah. but that's what urban spaces are. Yeah. Pretty much finding is the only way to slow people down. But you may not want to do that there. So. Well, it's, um, like I said, I wish we had a magic wand, um, but we don't. Um, I think it's just a product of a New England town that started out as a horse and buggy town. Right. Mm -hmm. And thank God cars are not as big as they were in the 60s. <laughs> and we do have 
a good percentage of vehicles now have collision avoidance. So maybe technology is helping us out as well. Maybe. Get a kid to bed, but thank All you, right. everyone. Thank you. Bye, Dan. Um, if um, anyone else has um, anything, if not, I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn and thank you all for for caring about this town and, and your input and, and help. Thank you. And we're moving into executive session to um, talk about employee. <laughs>